Good day grade 11s. In this lesson we're going to continue with learning about vectors in two dimensions and we're going to start by just adding some vectors. We're going to look at linear vectors and then we're going to look at a basic triangle method. So adding vectors in one dimension you've done before and it's actually pretty easy. For example we've got a boy who walks 14 meters east, say he walks 14 meters east, 14 meters east and then he walks a further 10 meters east, further 10 meters east. Okay, further 10 meters east. And remember what I said to you that the vectors, the length of the vectors is an indication of their direction. And um, I mean the size and obviously we have direction. Now please remember when you are drawing these you will use a ruler. I unfortunately cannot use a ruler on my digital pad. So therefore this is the way we do it. And if we had to draw it, do you see we've got 14 meters and 10 meters. So our resultant displacement is just from the beginning all the way to the end. So therefore it would be 14 plus 10 which is 24 meters east. But remember if we can't always draw it, we don't know if we always want to draw it, we can do it mathematically. We need to decide on a direction that is positive because remember these are vectors. So we're going to choose east as positive just because we can, because all the directions are positive. I mean east, therefore we got that the resultant is going to be 14 meters plus 10 meters, which equals 24 meters. And then because it's positive, it's obviously going east. Let's look at another example. Yeah, we have a lady and she walks 20 meters east. Okay, so she walks 20 meters east. 20 meters east. But then she walks 7 meters west. So she goes back 7 meters. 7 meters. And this is find her resultant displacement or find her displacement. So obviously displacement is how far she is from where she started, which is from here through to there. So that is her resultant. Okay, so it's pretty obvious that we can say 20 minus 7 is going to be 13 meters. So the resultant displacement is 13 meters. But what you guys have got to realize is that if I said to you please show this mathematically, we'd actually have to designate positive and negative depending on our direction. So what we're going to do is again, we're going to choose east as positive and we're going to choose west as negative. So then if I wanted to add this and I wanted to show it mathematically, you have to say that, okay fine, her displacement is going to equal, because remember resultant, the definition of resultant is that it's the sum of all the vectors. Resultant is the sum of all the vectors. So it's going to be 20 plus negative 7 because a 7 is in the opposite direction which obviously then becomes 20 minus 7 which is 13 meters but grade 11s you need to show this when you should do your calculations because this shows that you understand that you're getting a resultant which is by definition the sum of all the vectors and you are showing by doing this that you know that the 7 meters in the opposite direction and we haven't finished because I asked for displacement this is positive so we still need to give it the direction and that is 13 meters east Okay, so that's pretty easy. So acting vectors in one dimension we've done, it's cool, we've done it before. Now let's talk about adding nonlinear vectors. So there are three methods that we're going to be looking at. The first one is a triangle method, the second is a polygon method, and the third is the parallelogram method. And in this lesson I'm only going to be looking at the triangle method and we're going to make it nice and easy. We're only going to look at 90 degree triangles. Okay. So let's have a look at a triangle method. It is also called the tail to head method or some textbooks do call it the head to tail. I must admit I grew up calling this the head to tail. And what do they mean by that? If you draw a vector, remember that you've got an arrow. This here, the little bit with the arrow, is called the head. And this here at the end is called the tail. So the triangle method says that all our vectors have to be head to tail or tail to head. In other words, we have to draw one going like this and then another one like that. In fact, I shouldn't even be finishing those triangles. It's just because I worry that you're not going to see it. So it'd be like that. So it'd be head to tail or if you want to think of it as tail to head. But the point is that it is just in showing those directions. Okay, obviously those are linear. Let's have a proper example. So that would be one vector. 
and there would be another vector. So you will notice that there is my tail and there's my head. So that is tail to head method, okay? To get our resultant, your resultant is always going to be tail to tail and head to head when we are using this method, okay? That's the resultant. So resultant is the sum of all the vectors. In other words, it's the effective value of the two vectors taken together, okay? That's what it is. It's the effective value of the two vectors taken together. So now we can work this out using basic maths. If we have a right angle triangle, let's look at this if we had it. Let's say that this was vector 1. Okay, coming from here to there is vector 1. And let's call this, I don't know, 5 meters. No, let's make that 4 meters just to make my life easy. And we had a second vector. Okay, then do you agree my resultant would be this line with the arrowhead over here starting there? So my resultant would be up like this, right? So now if I said, I say, let's say I say that this is three meters, okay? We want to find the length of the right hand side triangle we can use Pythagoras. We want the resultant, but remember the resultant in this case is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always at 90 degrees. I mean, is opposite the 90 degrees, okay? And therefore, we know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared, that's just Pythagoras. Therefore, we can say r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And we don't have to worry about the minus here because we're always going to get a positive value in this case. So it's going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, in which in this case is 20. 25 square rooted, which is 5. So in this case, my resultant displacement is 5 meters. But I haven't finished. And the reason I haven't finished is because it's a vector and therefore I have to find the direction. So in order to find the direction, we can use simple trig ratios. So I'm sure you've heard of Sarka. Toa, soccer toa. And what does soccer toa stand for? Soccer toa stands for sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equal to adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So sa, sine is opposite of hypotenuse. Ka, so ka is cos is adjacent of hypotenuse, and toa is tan is opposite over adjacent. Now, we want an angle. And remember, there are three ways that we can find the directions. We can either do a compass bearing, or we can do bearings, or we can do relative to each other. And in this case, I've decided I want to find the bearing. So in order to do that, I need to find this little angle here. Because if you think about it, if I had to draw this on the Cartesian plane, let's put this like this, that there would be my zero where I started. And basically, I had traveled four meters west, and then I traveled three meters north. And I want to know what is that angle there. But we know up to this point here, up to where the 4 meters are long, that there is 270 degrees. So all I need to do is find what that little angle is there and add it on, and then I will find the bearing of my resultant. So let's find out what that little angle there is from there to there. So if we do that, we can use various things. I like to use what we're given in case we messed up. Let's say we messed up totally, put this in our calculator, and somehow got six. So then if we're using six, our answers are going to be wrong. But we were given that this is three, and we were given that this is four. So therefore, we are given the opposite side, and we are given the adjacent side. So therefore, we go tan theta is going to be the opposite side which is going to be 4, I mean 3, over 4, okay? So let's think about what that is. And if we look at that, we can see that that is, if we do it on our calculators, we can see that it is 36, and a second, I'm just going to find my, 36. 
36.87 degrees. So that there is 36.87 degrees. So then remember that that's just that little angle there. We need to find the bearing. So therefore we're going to add that to the 270 degrees. And we are going to end up with, if we add that to 270, we end up with 306 degrees. 306.87 degrees. Okay, so let's do an example now, a proper example. It says a girl walks due west for a distance of 50 meters and then 30 meters due south. Calculate her resultant displacement. Calculate her resultant displacement. Right, so if we have a look at this, we can first draw it. So the girl walks due west and then due south. So, okay, she walks, so here's our Cartesian plane. Okay, here's north, south, east, and west. And I'm going to change colors so we can see which way she's going. And it says she walks due west for 50 meters. So, here we go. She's walked due west for 50 meters. Remember, grade 11s, you should be doing this with a ruler. Okay, and then she walks 30 meters due south, and then she walks 30 meters due south, 30 meters. Right, so do you agree, therefore, her resultant should be from here down to there? Right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to work out our R, but because this is west and this is south, we know that that is a beautiful 90 degree. Because this is a right angle triangle, we can use Pythagoras, 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 to work out the length of R resultant. So we know that R is equal to the square root of our 50 squared plus our 30 squared. Okay, and if we pop that in the calculator, we have square root of 50 squared plus 30 squared and that comes to 58 58.31 meters so that is her resultant that's her resultant displacement how far she is from where she started is 38 I'm sorry 58.31 meters now grade 11 some of you might have got a 10 root 34 and in that case you need to change it to a decimal there is a button on your calculator that goes s and then it goes little arrows and then it goes d you need to press that little button because it'll change it to decimals you cannot in maths you can leave your answer in third form but in science you need to change it to 58.31 meters think about it this way if I said to you guys please go run 10 root 34 meters you won't know how far that is but if I say to you please go walk 58.31 meters it'll you'll have some idea of how far that is right have we finished no we haven't because they've asked us for the displacement and displacement is a vector which means we need the direction so now in order to get the direction we need to get this little angle here right that little angle there so we're going to call that theta and remember we can use some basic trig we're going to call it Sokotoa Sokotoa and we're going to again use what we're given first and in this case we were given the adjacent side and we were given the opposite side so again we're going to use tan so tan of theta is equal to the opposite side which is 30 over the adjacent side which is 50 so then we have to put this in our calculator so we go 30 divided by 50 and we end up with 30.96 degrees equals 30.96 degrees so if I told you that she walked 58.31 meters the angle of 30.96 degrees do you agree that's not really helpful because if that was the case you would think that she was walking up there somewhere okay why because this is always measured from north so even if 
this was not a bearing, but it was just given as 30.96, we would assume it's a bearing. So our two options is to do it. The one option is to do it as a compass reading, in which case we would say that this is 30.96 degrees south of west, okay? In other words, we're 30.96 degrees south of west. Or what we could do is we could say, well, that there is 270 degrees, and we could subtract that from 270 and say that or, or it's on a bearing of 239.04 degrees. In other words, the bearing measurement is actually from north all the way around to the resultant and that is 239.04 degrees. And that grade 11s is how you add vectors in linearly when we have them in the straight line and when we use the triangle method. In the next lesson, we'll look at the polygon method. Have a great day.